Hi, welcome to The Gamesplainer. I'm Jeff The Gamesplainer and today I'm gamesplaining My Village. In the game of My Village, each of us is the owner of a village which will have its residents, as marked by these markers, which have money, which are also marked by these markers. In a turn, player one will roll all of these dice and then in turn, every player will use two of those dice faces to action a space. So if you look around the board, you will notice there are a whole bunch of numbers everywhere. If they're in these colored banners, that is the only thing you can do with the die. If they are white colored banners, you can do as many of the same numbered white colored banners that you have in your village as you like. So with the current roll, the first player might choose to take two sixes, which would enable them to grab a number 12, which gives them the choice of either this council chamber card or red card because of the two or 12, or this one of the four church cards. There is another 12 up there for one of the monks, but you cannot have monks unless you have a church. You are only allowed to have one church. There's four different ones to choose from. Each of them have slightly different uses. All of the council chamber cards are the same as in that stack just there. When something is selected, there is a time cost. One, two, three. So you're pushing this marker around the time track and then that will be flipped over and placed next to its location. That will give this player four points at the end of the game. It also gives him a church, so he's able to start grabbing monks to add to that church. If he'd chosen to go with this one, he would get that marker, which is that banner, and that can be placed anywhere. So for example, I can place that next to this banner. So now whenever I roll a two, a three, 11, or a 12, I can action this space. That also costs two time. That will give him one point. That's what one point looks like. And that goes on to this area here, which is called the story tree. That is not safe points at the moment. That's potential points. Flip this card over and then put a marker on it. So what this card does, other than giving him two points at the end of the game, is for every one of these markers that he has on that card, he will be able to change the face of one of the dice. Other things that he could do with this particular roll is off the current situation. If he takes the two, he can claim this two and that two. Of course, they're on the white banners. He gets to do every two that's available, which is that one. So it's another ability to change a dice roll and adding one there. This area down the bottom is called the school and this is where you're training up new people. So when people eventually die, you'll need to move people from the school into the location where they, where they died from. That's right, your workers are going to die. This is why we're tracking time. So when I added one here, I would have taken an extra time. There is no time cost on this one. If I choose to go with two again, I would have to grab these two dice. The black dice cost you two time each. So they're like the, like the black plague coming through your, uh, your, your village. So to claim those two, I would move this forward two for one of the dice and two again. One, two, when I pass the bridge, the Grim Reaper goes over the top of that to remind me that I need to kill off one of my workers. Once again, I would action that, which would take another time. And now I have a choice down at the school. I can either shift this guy along to the second position, or I can pay a time to move him into one of the work spots. Now all the work spots are currently full, so I'd move him across. And if I got a three or an 11 or 12 or a two again, I'd be able to add another one in there. Now, when I graduate someone from this location, it will cost me the time. So let's say that guy's gone. I'd move him there. I'd also gain two points onto the story tree. Now, why is that important? Because since the Grim Reaper is on the token or the token has passed by the bridge, I put the Grim Reaper back. I need to kill off one of my guys. If I kill off this guy, I'm not going to be able to use those tokens. If I kill off this guy, I won't be able to put any more monks into my church. If I kill off any of those three, I won't be able to bring in cards from those particular guys. So for example, I might 
choose to kill off this guy. Because he's come from the red spot, he gets killed to the red spot, and that also gives me another two points to my story tree. Now, whenever I do that, I will now roll this gray die. I roll the die and move the rat along that many spots. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then that goes back on. So the next time someone dies, that will roll again, and he will move forward. Once he gets into this spot, this is him coming in and eating up the stories. So it's a rat eating the stories. So anything, any points that are on the story tree, the rat eats half of them rounding down. So this player currently has five on the story tree. Two of those are going to get eaten, and then the rat goes back to his starting position. Notice there's a different starting position for two, three, and four players. So this is set up for a two-player game. Now, the way that I could have stopped that from happening, or at least mitigated the risk of, of that, is I could use any of the two dice, so it doesn't really matter which, to move this guy forward to there. It will cost me a time. See, whenever there's that little hourglass marker underneath the number or the question mark, question mark means you can use any combination of numbers. Whenever you've got that hourglass marker, it means it costs you a time. If there's multiple hourglasses, it costs you multiple time. When I move my guy to there, I get one money. On the next time that I choose to do that, I might take that. Once again, it'll cost me a time. I can either move forward to here to grab three more points onto my story tree, or I can move back into the main house. And what that is, is that's him coming out and collecting the stories from the village and going back into the main house to write them down. So those points are now ongoing and existing points. If I were to take a five or an eight, on this particular board, and this is the pair of numbers that's different on every board, that could be used to add another one point story to the story tree to be able to be collected later. And you'll notice that didn't cost any time at all. If I were to roll a four or a 10, coming back up here to the main, to the main communal board, this allows me to bring a number of customers into my village. So it will cost me one time to bring one customer, two times to bring two customers, and money in two time for three customers, and money in three time. For, th for four customers. And I get to choose out of the six available on here. So I may choose to bring in uh, those two and this one. Well, let's bring in three. So if I bring those three customers in, I'll then replenish the stock of customers that are available for the next player. That would cost me two time, one, two, and one money, which is these guys. These customers are now waiting for me to be able to do the particular goods. So let's move up to here. This is the craft area. There are a lot of cards on this table you can notice. So the craft area is talking about these five different cards at the top of the, of the table. In order to add these five cards or any of these five cards to my village, I would need to roll the number that is in the blue or black. I'm not quite sure. The Rules keep referring to it as black, but my eyes see it as a very, very dark blue. So whichever one, I'll probably call them blue, but please forgive me if the rules say different. So if you were to claim an eight, that would mean that I could claim the beer maker, the wagon maker, a plow maker. So because my customers are looking for wagons, horses, and plows, most likely be trying to Take a plow card. That will cost me two time. Then I flip it over and I get one marker. One marker. So, so I now have a plow that I am able to sell if I wish. So next time if I were to roll an eight, I would be able to take a point for the story tree because of this eight plus create another plow and that will cost me a time. And then because this has a question mark on it, I could then use the eight to sell to this particular customer one of those plows. That would come off the board. That cost me one more time. This customer is now happy, and so we flip that over, and that will give me three points at the end of the game, and we create a pile of those, of those customer cards to add up at the end of the game for points. The other two spaces I haven't dealt with are the travel space, which is talking about these five cards at the top of the table. You need to take these cards in order. So you take an A card, which will have between two and four points on the back of it and will cost you two time. You flip that over and add that to your travel line. If there's a banner in the top right corner, that is saying that for your next journey, you'll need to take a B card, which will have a cost on the back of it of time and horse or money. 
you'll also need to pay one extra money to be able to get that into your travel line. There are only five cards available, A, B, C, D, and E. Some of the cards have a banner with an extra cost for you to be able to move on to the next area. One of the D cards has a picture of a church on it. When you get to the church, that is the end of your journey. If you get this card, you're not able to go on to E. Everyone else can go all the way to E and get five cards. Remembering every time you travel, there will be a, a time cost as well as a goods cost or a money cost. The only other card I haven't dealt with is the field card. The field cards don't need a worker. Of course, you'll notice there's no spot for a worker to action them. You get them on an 11, they'll cost you a time, and you get one money when you take them. You flip that over, and that is a field. So whenever you roll an 11, you will be able to create a money. So I took a money when I took it and moved forward my time. If I take an 11, I can promote a guy from my school, which costs a time. I can spend a time to take one more money. Now, if this card has a plow on it, I have a plow available, I can move that across at any time. When I got my 11, that would actually give me a second money. We're almost through the game explanation. This is quite a long one. I haven't really gone into the iconography so much, um, but I think I've covered pretty much everything else. The only other thing that we have is the first player marker. At the beginning of every turn, before the dice are rolled, a one point is put onto the open hand of the first player marker. So after a few rounds, you may find that is quite heavy with points. Any player is able to take the first player marker if they have are able to claim a four or a 10 out of the dice roll. So they take that, place all those points onto their story tree and flip that marker over so to remind people that no one else is able to actually take that this turn. It's worth one point at the end of the game if you're holding it. And then for the next turn, you flip that back up. It's now available for people to steal from you again or take from you again. And you add another point and keep going. I think that I've managed to cover everything that is necessary uh, for you to get my village to the table. The iconography is fairly straightforward, so I'm not going to do another video with that iconography in it. Um, I'll go straight on to do a gameplay. So uh, I hope this helps you get my village to the table. If you have any comments or suggestions, please write them below. If you have any games that you wish to be gamesplained, please shoot me an email at thegamesplainer at gmail.com. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at the games planner to see what games I've been playing. Subscribe to my videos to keep up to date with the games that I'm games planning. And until next time, enjoy gaming.